Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about some um, geometric shapes called angles and how we can categorize them and work with them. So an angle is the union of two rays that have a common endpoint. So here we have a diagram of an angle and the endpoints of the two rays that are joined here is the point B. We call that the vertex of this object, which is the angle swept out by these two rays. An angle can be named with the letter marking its vertex. So this angle could be called angle B, and we would put the symbol of an angle, which looks like a little angle itself, in front of the letter B. You can also name it using three letters. So for example, we could name this same angle, angle ABC or angle CBA. The first letter has to be a point on one of the sides or the rays. The second letter has to be the vertex. That's why the letter B is in the middle of both of those names, angle ABC and angle CBA. The third letter is a point on the other side, whichever side you haven't listed yet. Angles are measured by the amount of rotation. 360 degrees is the amount of rotation of a ray back onto itself, forming a full circle. 180 degrees would be half of a circle. An angle of size 90 degrees would be a quarter of a circle and we can have sizes in between. 45 degrees would be half of 90. 10 degrees would be a pretty small angle. 150 degrees would be close to 180 but bigger than 90. And we often categorize angles by their sizes. So if an angle happens to be between 0 and 90 degrees, we call that an acute angle. Acute means sharp to a point. So notice that both the angles 10 and 45 are between 0 and 90 degrees. They're acute angles, so they come to a sharp point. A right angle refers to an angle that's 90 degrees. An angle that's greater than 90 but less than 180 is called obtuse. Obtuse is a synonym for dull. In other words, not sharp. An example of an obtuse angle would be an angle of 150 degrees. And then finally, for an angle of 180 degrees, we actually call it a straight angle because it forms a straight line. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.